Hey guys, Kristen here. Today we're talking about traveling alone as an introvert. Over the past few years, I've seen people talking a lot more about being introverted and I feel like there's more introverts out there maybe even than extroverts. And even though I've been traveling for the better part of nine years by myself, it doesn't mean that it hasn't been without its challenges as someone who really recharges when she's alone. <laughs> it might seem counterintuitive that someone who travels alone would be introverted, but I think for a lot of us that's the case. And it's just so weird because I feel like in my 20s, I was extremely extroverted to the point that I didn't even know who I was anymore if two days went by and I didn't spend it with other people. And as I got into my 30s, I'm 35 now, I just started to really need to be alone to recharge. So I'm very outgoing and friendly. I'm not shy, but I need to be by myself sometimes just so that I can like recharge, plug back in and sort of reset the whole situation. If you're the same way and you're worried about traveling alone, don't worry. I've got some tips for you so that you can still meet people, not be super lonely and still have a really good time traveling by yourself. My first and biggest suggestion for you is to stay in social accommodation. So when I first started my big trip nine years ago, I bought a one-way ticket to Bangkok, went to Southeast Asia by myself, nothing but a carry-on backpack, zero plans, except for I knew that I wanted to stay in dorms as much as possible. Not only to save money, but just so that I could meet people really easily. And so the beauty of that is that you've got a built-in network of people pretty much everywhere you go. You just meet people so easily and you know, if you're at the point where you're kind of past wanting to share rooms with people, but you still want the socialness, you can stay in a private room in a hostel and still meet plenty of people that way. But I actually exclusively <laughs> pretty much traveled in dorms for the first two years that I was traveling by myself, um, starting at age 26. And I've found them to be such an amazing way to meet people the world over in South America and Southern Africa. In Central America, I heard they're amazing. They were freaking awesome in China. And so I've found them to be a wonderful, wonderful built-in way to have friends around without even really having to try. But now I'm 35 and I don't want to stay in dorms or hostels anymore. And so if you are finding yourself in the same situation, don't despair. Hotels, Airbnbs, whatever, these are all still fine. You're still going to be able to meet people in other ways, just know that they can get really isolating after a while and that it can be really seductive to just stay in your room and never talk to anyone, never meet anyone. I know some people are constantly doing things when they travel, but I can't do that. And I sometimes just like lay in bed for hours. And so you're gonna have to take that extra effort, which I know for introverts can be hard <laughs> to get out there and meet people. So these are the ways that I make sure that I do that. One thing I like to do is sign up for a day tour and pay for it so that I'm losing money if I back out. <laughs> If I haven't paid for it already, I'm not gonna be as motivated to go. I might find excuses. I might just find it easier to be by myself. So I find it better to sign up for things and to pay for them. And look, I pretty much always enjoy myself. I mean, you can take a walking tour if you're in a city. When I was in the Philippines, I did day trips all around Shargao Island. I went to the lagoons. I went to some of the famous beaches and I met a really good friend that way who I still know today. And so I didn't have to be staying in dorms in order to meet her. I was able to meet her on the day trip that I took. And so that really simplified things for me that way. You can also stay in things like yoga retreat types of centers. When I was in Indonesia, those seemed to actually be pretty common and popular. And I think Thailand as well. Some yoga centers there actually have accommodation as well. And so to me, that's kind of the in-between of like a dorm because you're going to get people who are a little bit probably older and higher end travelers there. Maybe that would be a little bit more your speed than a dorm if you just kind of feel like you're past that point in your traveling career. In Southern Africa as well, for example, you're going to find a lot of backpackers or camping accommodation and you meet people of all ages in those. They have everything from dorms to like private chalets to campgrounds, usually all within one spot and like a lot of really cool hangout spots that are communal. So 
there's a lot of different options out there other than dorms or totally being by yourself. It just depends on the part of the world that you're in. So do a little bit of research when you pick where you wanna go and see if maybe you can meet people that way. The next thing I like to do is sign up for classes. So these are a little bit different than day trips because with classes, it's even sometimes a little bit more interactive. Cooking classes are super fun. It's not only a really good way to get to know other people and other travelers, but the culture that you're in. You often get to go to markets to buy the food, which is a super local thing to do. You get to learn how to make all of this delicious food. And it's hard to think of a place where it wouldn't be a good idea to take a cooking class. You could take dance classes. You could take language classes if you're gonna be in a place for a longer time. Language classes are a great way to meet other people. Usually a lot of other people from all kinds of cultural backgrounds. And so I do highly recommend that if you're gonna stay in a place for any stretch of time. Next, look online. There are lots of meetup groups that you can look at. So look at meetup.com. There are lots of Facebook groups where you can meet other solo travelers. I actually created one called the Solo Female Traveler Connect, and that's on Facebook. I'll link it below. It's already got, I think, over 13,000 members. So if you wanna meet other solo female travelers, that group is open to women traveling alone. Couchsurfing is another one where you don't necessarily have to stay with the person, but you can use the platform to meet people and just meet up for like dinner or things like that. Also, social media can be your friend in terms of tapping into your network. You never know who might know somebody somewhere that you're going. I've actually made really good connections by meeting people on the road, and then meeting up with their friends on the road. And it's even like sometimes quite a removed <laughs> relationship. And still you can meet up with these people and have a really cool time with them. And so I do highly recommend tapping into your network and really making plans and meeting up with people and following through with it when you're traveling alone so that you have a chance to meet people and make new connections. Finally, as a fellow introvert, I feel I have to tell you that being alone is actually not a problem when I travel alone. When I went on a solo road trip through Utah this summer, I was alone for pretty much the entire week. I would meet people here and there and have conversations with them. Like when I was at the hot springs, I had an opportunity to meet some people then, but for the most part, I was camping completely alone and isolated. I was in the car alone and isolated, hiking alone and isolated, and that was exactly what I wanted. <laughs> I actually really quite like being by myself and I don't mind these days not seeing people for, for days. It's, it's not a problem for me. In fact, being alone is my big chance to sort of come back to myself. And so it is really nice and important, especially as an introvert, to take that time and really enjoy it and not feel bad about being by yourself. I think it really comes down to learning to be comfortable with what it is that you want, learning how to tune in to your needs and really listen to yourself. And when you're feeling like you want that interaction, going and getting it and not holding back. And when you're feeling like you wanna be alone, letting yourself do that too and letting that be okay. The wonderful thing about traveling, especially by yourself, is that you are the you that you are right then and there. No one who knows you is around, and so you get to choose how you wanna show up, and nothing in the past really matters. So I hope that this helps you to feel a little bit more confident about traveling alone if you are an introverted traveler, solo traveler, because there's a lot of amazing opportunities for us out there too. So have a blast. Watch my other videos on this channel about mistakes not to make when you travel alone and some of my favorite places to travel solo. Watch those next and have an amazing trip. Bye.